Good evening, good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to this service. Let me tell you that this service is being pre-recorded. It is being pre-recorded on Wednesday the 3rd, and I'm telling you this because in these difficult times that we're involved with, where we never know from one hour to the next what is going to happen, if God forbid some major event takes place in the next couple of days, and I'm not able to talk about it, it's because we pre-recorded. That doesn't prevent you, however, from tuning in to our Shabbat morning service on Saturday, June the 6th. So welcome, and may this be a quiet Shabbat and a peaceful Shabbat for all of us. Let us begin with the singing of Kol Han Shema. <laughs> There are days when we seek things for ourselves and measure failure by what we cannot gain. On Shabbat, we seek not to acquire, but to share. <clears throat> there are days when we exploit nature as if it were a horn of plenty that can never be exhausted. On Shabbat, we stand in wonder before the mystery of creation. There are days when we act as if we cared nothing for the rights of others. On Shabbat, we remember that justice is our duty and a better world, our goal. So we embrace Shabbat, day of rest, day of wonder, day of peace. We continue with the singing of Hine Matov Umanayim. And now we continue with the Barhu. Praise Adonai, to whom praise is due forever. 
Praise be Adonai, to whom praise is due, now and forever. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bidbaro ma'ariv aravim. This is an hour of change. Within it, we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it, we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? Baruch Adonai, Amariv Aravim. Wisdom and wonder, passion and instruction, story and symbol, all these things your Torah gives us. And the more we devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. What could be a truer token of your abiding love, of this holiness of your works, and the living language that gives it form? Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. We continue with the Shema. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is God's glorious majesty forever and ever. We continue with, you shall love Adonai your God. <laughs> Give us a place to rest, Adonai our God. Bring us into shelter in the soft long evening shadows of your truth. For with you our true protection and safety, and in your presence our acceptance and gentle love. Watch over us as we go forth. Prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace over all we love over our Jerusalem and yours, Baruch Atah Adonai, Apore Sukkot Shalom Aleinu, Ba'al Kol Amo Yisrael, Ba'al Yerushalayim. We continue with the singing of Yismachu. Yismachu. 
The people of Israel shall keep Shabbat, observing Shabbat throughout the ages as a covenant for all time. It is a sign for all time between me and the people of Israel, for in six days Adonai made heaven and earth. On the seventh day, God ceased from work and was refreshed. We continue with the tefillah. A 
אתה קדוש, ושמך קדוש, וקדושים בכל יום יהללו הסלע, ברוך אתה אדוני, האל הקדוש. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. We continue with Ritzei. A prayer for peace. Grant us peace, your most precious gift, O eternal source of peace, and give us the will to proclaim its message to all the peoples of the earth. Bless our country as a safeguard of peace, its advocate among the nations. May contentment reign within our borders, health and happiness within our homes. Strengthen the bonds of friendship and fellowship among all the inhabitants of every land. Plant virtue in every soul. And may the love of your name hallow every home and every heart. Praise to you, Eternal One, who blesses our people with peace. Baruch atarunai, amivarech et amo Yisrael. Bashalom. A few moments of silent private prayer.
Let us pray for those who have been ill. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill. And let me mention in particular Nancy Freund, Andrew Lerman, Eileen Egan, Joshua Haran, Katie Pastor, Trudy Caruso, Zachary Pastor, Douglas Baker, Rebecca Lutkoff. We mention, say the names out loud, those of your loved ones and your friends that I haven't mentioned. And we mention privately and silently those who have been ill who do not want their names mentioned in public. May they all be granted a refuah shleima, a quick, easy recovery, as we sing this Misha Berach together. Those who are feeling better, who got good test results this week, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who has bestowed every goodness upon us. May the one who has bestowed goodness upon us continue to bestow every goodness upon us forever. A prayer for the country. Thus says Adonai, this is what I desire to unlock the fetters of wickedness and untie the cords of lawlessness, to let the oppressed go free, to break off every yoke, share your bread with the hungry and take the wretched poor into your home. When you see the naked, give clothing and do not ignore your own kin. If you banish the yoke from your midst, the menacing hand, the evil speech, if you offer compassion to the hungry and satisfy the famished creature, then your light shall shine in darkness. It is obvious that we are living in very difficult and uncertain times. There are certain questions I can't answer because I can't predict the future. 
When will we reopen the temple so we can have services the way we used to? When will this pandemic be over? What will be the end results of the protests on the one hand and the looting on the other? Is racism something we're always going to have to deal with? And what is the relationship between religious communities and the government at a time like this. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a few moments. We're not sure when we're going to be able to reopen. We want to be safe. We want to be more careful than reckless. But that doesn't mean we're ignoring reality. We have prepared multitudes of scenarios. And when we reopen, it will have to be in stages. We can't just say, everything's fine. You miss, I miss the opportunity to get together in person. Unfortunately, it would be reckless if we were to do so right now. We don't know when the pandemic will be over. Do the medical scientists even understand it? Some of us, I'm one of them, I'm very concerned about the opening up of beaches and bars when people get together in close proximity. The protest rallies that we see on television, that we understand are going on throughout this country. Look how close all those people are and how many are even wearing masks. I fear, I hope I am wrong, but I fear this is causing, from a health perspective, more harm than good. Now, we can't just solve the issue of when we go back into the building, but we can be cautious. We can't solve the problem of the spread of a pandemic, but at least we can try to reduce the problem. Some problems can't be eliminated or it can't be eliminated overnight, but we can reduce them. Much larger. That nightmare of racism, however you understand the word. And we all understand it differently. And victims of racism can also be victimizers of racism. The complexities are overwhelming. People who don't think they're racist are, and vice versa. Can we eliminate it overnight? No. But we can reduce. And if I may just suggest a first step and a simple step, it has to do with language. Eliminate certain words from your speech. Never use them. And the words we eliminate change because society changes and language changes. What would be appropriate as a term to refer to certain groups or races let's say 50 years ago, no longer appropriate today. All you have to do is read material that was written just 50 years ago. And from the perspective of our congregation, 50 years ago isn't such a long time. We can also, while we're talking about words, eliminate the nasty words that we hear so often in public discourse. And when I say that, I know it depends on who's listening and what the person wants to hear, because those on the right think I'm talking about the nasty words that are coming from the left and vice versa. I have a friend, I guess you'd call him a friend, from Maryland. He is a Protestant minister. He is quite right-wing in his thinking, 
and said basically the same thing I just said. Eliminate all the nasty words. But he's thinking of nasty words coming from one place, and I'm thinking of nasty words coming from another. Actually, a great speaker, a great politician says something that both sides, while they disagree completely, can think he's speaking to them. Now, we've always had a very, very sensitive issue of the separation of church and state. Usually it's an issue of clergy or religious organizations supporting candidates or parties where the religious group tramples on the political aspect of life. In the past couple of days, I think we saw the exact opposite. And I am deferring to the hierarchy of the Episcopal Church and the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church in D.C., where they feel what happened was inappropriate. I think, I'm making a strong statement here, I know, that all religious groups need to band together and have that separation where we can't be used and can't be exploited. I know there are religious groups that tell their followers how to vote. I know there are religious groups that demonize one candidate over another. But I can't help thinking about what happened. It's what, a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, I used this specific example, the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. What happened on Longboat Key was that the non-Jewish clergy all expressed their concern. And for the community Thanksgiving service we had that year, special words were said in support of the Jews of Tree of Life and our community here. We all have to band together. So I support what the bishop from the Episcopal Church said on television and openly, and what the Roman Catholic Archbishop said. We need to keep certain things separate. It's too dangerous to do otherwise. We support positions, we all do. Some very powerfully, sometimes to the point that members of our congregation would be upset with us. And that too is part of life. But in these very, very challenging days, when we ask everyone for restraint, whereas I have put it, I'm afraid that one wrong move, one little push or one little shove, and I mean that literally, not figuratively, but figuratively as well, one little push and a response isn't ignoring it, but a fist could set the world on fire. We don't want that. We need to restrain ourselves. We need to watch what we say and watch what we do. We need to work together as a small community and then a somewhat larger community and then even a larger community. We can't make the whole world be like us, but maybe within our own families or our own congregations, we can at least change our ways. And I really, really hope we will take care of ourselves, not just physically, not just by wearing the masks and washing of the hands. You can't conquer a pandemic if you don't want to recognize it's there or if you want to feel it's all over. Not just physically, but spiritually as well. And we pray that we may have the strength to do that, that we think twice before we say anything, we think twice squared before we start accusing, and work together to make this world a better and a safer place. And I hope all of us can band together to do that. Thank you for listening.
We will have a, another service on Shabbat morning. We will have the discussion class on Tuesday morning. Meanwhile, we will continue with our service as we turn to the adoration and uh, begin the concluding part of our service. Our thoughts turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died in this season and years past, and those whom we have taken into our hearts with our own. We remember the recently departed Merrill Goldman, Danny Bear, Frida Shapiro, Douglas Gross, Ruth Perlman, Morton Skirbo, Earl Gordon. We remember those whose yard sites occur at this time, Allison Clayback, Arnold Rosen, Maurice Azarad, Frederick Burton, Pearl Fishman, Saul C. Grossman, Gerald Harlem, Sheila Mahler, Bell Novick, Rose Orlick, Ethel Padolin, Howard A. Sabin, Sylvia Schottenfield, Philip Sinai, Lawrence Strock, and we mention, of course, George Floyd. Let us take a moment to mention names of other friends and family members at this time. Yit gadal, yit kadash shemei rabba, ve'al ma divrach erutei v'yamlich malchutei, v'chai echon of yom echon, u'v'chai yedecho beit Yisrael, v'agala u'v'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shmei rabba mevarach le'olam u'l'almei almaya, yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnasei, Vitadar vitale vitalal, shme de kucha brichu. Le elam in koberhata vishirata, tushbachata venechamata, damiran ve alma ve imru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya vachayim alenu ve al kor Yisrael ve imru amen. O se shalom bim romal, hui a se shalom. 
Alenu vi al kol Yisrael vi imru amen. May the source of peace grant peace unto those who mourn and comfort the breathed among us. And let us all say, Amen. At this point, it gives me great pleasure to call upon our new president, Stuart Sinai, to share some thoughts with us. Thank you, Rabbi, and thank you uh, for your important words and observations tonight. These are my first words to you all, officially as your president, which began just a few days ago on June 1. Let me say first, it's not just my honor, but my pleasure and joy to serve as your president. The rabbis already addressed what's going on in the world, the long-standing egregious racism. I'm not going to get into it anymore other than to say, well, as you know, the Federation and the rabbi have spoken about it several times. But we all know what it's like. Our empathy is built into our genetic structure, our DNA. 400 plus years in Europe, and unfortunately also we've seen it here, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, violence, inbred, hatred, caused, and still causes us pain as well. We too have suffered and endured. We also know what it's like. It's our duty, tikkun olam, to help, however we can in a righteous fight, but not, as the rabbi said, condoning looting, destruction, and rioting. But let me get on to some temple matters. We, as you all know, have a beautiful building. We have beautiful grounds. We have an empathetic, compassionate, compassionate approachable, and learned rabbi who addresses not only your spiritual issues, but the issues affecting our community and our country. We have a choir second to none. We have Anne, Dr. Ann Mo, our organist and conductor extraordinaire. We have Kai, who does everything so beautifully. We have an enthusiastic and dedicated executive director and staff and executive officers. And carrying on during this period, we have Zoom and virtual Friday evening and Saturday morning services. The rabbis well received Zoom Tuesday, almost anything goes class, um, is there for discussion and lots of fun when we discuss all these issues. We have pre-Shabbat happy hours, once a month Shabbat dinners, tonight. We are still, if we're still at stay at home status, we'll have Zoom classes in the fall, our mini-versity and other programs. We'll have our full choir, we'll be back on Zoom as well. We have stepped up our game and we're here to meet the challenges and to keep our members connected. And we all are concerned about you, our temple family. May everyone be blessed with peace, fulfillment, health, and practice safe when you venture out. Thank you. Stuart, thank you. Let us conclude the service with the singing of Shalom Aleichem.
יברכך אדוני וישמרך, יאר אדוני פניו אליך ויחונך, יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. May the eternal one bless you by protecting you, protecting you from disease and protecting you from hate. May the light of the eternal one shine upon you and may the eternal one be gracious to you. May you feel the presence of the eternal one and may you find peace. Good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.